What's up Covalence friends? Today, we're gonna to be talking about decoupling your application. And what I mean by that is separating your database from your backend and your backend from your front end, mostly from a model standpoint. So you want your developers to be able to work on each of those components independently without being restricted or blocked by each other. Let's get right into it. All right, so we're starting off with our Express template and we're bundling using Browserify. So if you guys wanna use this template, you can actually get the link for the repo in the description below and you can just clone it and use it. Um, but again, it's pretty simple. It's just a basic, a basic Express server that's separated out into a server and client component. But what we're gonna be talking about today is essentially decoupling the server from the database and the client from the server. And so what I'm gonna start with is I'm actually gonna create a typings folder first, just because we are using TypeScript and some of these examples are gonna make a little bit more sense if I have some actual models in here. But basically what we would typically have are three separate namespaces. So we'd have a namespace called client. We may have a namespace called you know, server. And finally a namespace called DB, let's just say, right? And so I'm actually gonna move this microphone a little bit real quick, all right. Um, and so the client server and DB are gonna be three separate models that they might be the exact same. So for instance, if we have an interface called iUser, right? That has an ID, let's just say, right? ID number. And we're gonna have that iUser inside of server, client, and data. And you can just use user, right? You could just use interface user. I like to have the i in front of it. I don't know why, it's a habit. Um, but again, interface iUser. Uh, it kind of differentiates between if you had a class called user, right? And so again, we have our interface here and we have numbers in each. Now, the difference is, is that a database admin might create column names um, and they might be changing those column names around, you never actually know. But again, if they don't create the database first, then the server is not gonna know the properties. And likewise, the client's not gonna know the properties if the server doesn't know the properties, right? And so. Realistically, you could do things in serial where you just kind of have like a waterfall where, you know, essentially you create the model in the database and then you go and you create the, the models in the servers and you ingest those. But if you have a team, you want that team to be as productive as possible and you want them to be kind of working on the application all at once. And so the way that you can actually do this is that you allow each one to actually create, you know, the models where you, where you know that certain properties are going to have to exist and you don't need to know the actual column names for each, right? So the server shouldn't have to know the actual column names in the DB. The DB should be able to select a bunch of properties and the server should be able to only take in whatever, you know, those properties it needs, right? Or whatever the properties it needs from that. And so the client, the same exact thing, right? So the client's gonna be ingesting models from the server, but from the API, it should be able to have some sort of translation layer that, again, it might use properties that are different. It might use virtual properties that don't exist on the server, right? And so we want to have some sort of layer that allows us to do that. So for instance, um, a, a potential virtual property might be that in the database, we have something like a DOB, but on the server, we actually have an age and the same goes for the, the user, right? So we might have something like this where we don't need the date of birth on the client or the server. Maybe we don't even want the date of birth. Maybe we wanna make sure we hide that date of birth. Um, so we only want the age to be visible on the client and in the server, let's just say, or you know, potentially it might be the, like the difference where maybe the DOB exists on the server, but it doesn't exist on the client, right? So again, this is just an example. Um, it's not necessarily something that's in real life case, but again, it might be something along these lines. And so in the server, we would typically kind of have like a folder maybe called DB where you might have whatever ORM you're using um, might exist in this folder. Um, but what I also like to have is some sort of repositories folder as well. And then in here, I would use like a user dot, we can call it, uh, you know, B repo dot TS and in here is where we're gonna actually use, um, you know, the function, let's just say export function, you know, get user for right now, right? So we're gonna be using, we're gonna actually be getting the user here. We're gonna be calling something like a service. So we might have a services folder as well. And in here we have our user.bsvc.ts and this is our backend service. And we're gonna have our export function get user as well here, right? 
And now when we're actually making the call to the database, we are going to be transforming this model. So again, um, in this particular case, it's just to get user. Uh, but if we wanted to actually create user, so we could have export function create user, right? And this is going to be expected to pass in a model that is of type, let's just say it's going to be db.iuser, right? And then we would actually make our query here that's going to create this. Now this is, this actually will be returning a db.iuser. All right, and so this just say, you know, for right now, we'll just return ID zero or ID one and DOB new date. Obviously you wouldn't have these typing issues um, if uh, you wouldn't have to actually have all these properties in here if you were just pulling stuff from a database. Um, but since we're hard coding, we have to actually fill all this out, right? But again, inside here, we'd have our export function get user. We'd have our export function create user. And then we would have a transform to and a transform from. So we might have some sort of const here called transform. And it might have a to function and a from function, right? All right, and so we're going to be essentially calling, we'll import our service. So we're gonna import star as user service from services slash user dot B service, right? And then right here, we're going to be returning and it's going to be, you know, it would likely be an async function. So let's just go ahead and make these async functions. And then this as well, right? Just so the code is kind of consistent, right? But uh, so let's see, this would be return and it would be transform dot, you know, from and in here, we would basically be returning a server.iuser. And again, it needs to actually have these. Um, and we would be passing in our model, which is going to be a db.iuser. And then two is going to be the opposite, right? So it's actually going to be our model will be server.iuser and it would be creating a db user, right? So again, we would just be kind of returning here, which would be id and it would be uh, model.id and we would have uh, dob, which we're just gonna put new date, but it would really be model.age translated into dob, let's just say, or you may not actually even be passing in an age in this case, so we might actually only be returning a partial here right? So it might be something along these lines. Or you could also likewise, you could just have DOB as a question mark, you know, age as a question mark, that kind of thing. It depends on how you want to actually structure your code. Um, you could use partials, you could use optional uh, properties, that kind of thing. But um, let's see, this is going to be ID model ID, and then age is going to be some sort of translated database or sorry, translated DOB, right? But again, we'll just use a hard coded value just so that we don't have to actually write all these functions, but we will return transform.from and it would be await, you know, user service dot get user. And we need this to be an async function as well. And then also here. So forgetting a lot of keywords today, but in here you would, you know, return user service dot create user and you would do transform.2 and you'd actually pass in your model. So you'd have your model in here, which would be uh, a server.iuser and you would pass in your model. All right, so let's see. Doesn't like something. Um, it doesn't like the fact that I'm using partials. So again, like I said, there's pros and cons to both using partials or optional arguments. Um, let's see, what doesn't it like about this? Oh, promise, right? So yeah, this needs to be a promise of a db.i user. And then that should be good. So again, we have our to and from transforms and we have our get user and our create user now. And we're kind of showcasing how we would transform this to a server model or to a database model, right? And this way, your 
database admins can work independently. Your backend admins or your backend developers can work independently. They can create all of their functions. They can test their data. They can use mock data and they don't actually need to be dependent on one another and they can write this translation layer after the fact to make sure all the properties align up. So I feel like it's a much quicker, you know, faster to production model. Um, this would be for the back end. Now, obviously the cert or the front end is very similar in this in the front end. We have our source code in here. And again, we might have our services as well as our repos. And again, we would have our user.svc.ts and we'd have our user.repo.ts and the exact same way that we have it done on the database, we would do it essentially on the front end, except it would be um, with different, not the db.iuser, this would be server.iuser, right? So it wants this to be an age, you know, zero. Um, and then we would have not this, it would be, you know, server.iuser. And so we would be returning this, this would actually be a fetch. So this would basically just be a, you know, fetch. Oh, well, it needs that. But again, it would be some sort of fetch request to the API. And so we would actually be returning those values. Um, I'm not going to write out the fetch right now. I'm just going to return the static value, but don't worry too much about this age zero. Let's at least do 50, you know, come on. Uh, but again, this is our user to SVC. And now likewise, we'd have our user.repo.ts, which would be very similar to here, where we would basically just have our, um, yeah, this is missing this, so we just need to change that. And again, um, it isn't liking this because of our types here. So these types would now need to be client.iuser and server, and then likewise server and client, right? All right, and so far in this particular case, uh, we're going to have the same properties. And so it would just be a direct copy of the model. Um, you could even use a library to do a deep copy, um, or you could even just return the model itself, right? So you could just return model here, uh, return model. But I recommend that you do copies. Um, you can even export this transform and you can use it to deep copy the model. Uh, it is good for creating, you know, essentially, um, like mutable copies and that kind of thing or immutable copies, right? And so you wanna be able to actually have a way to copy these values um, and also have a layer where you can actually change these values if you need to. So I know historically, a lot of people like to have a camel case on the front end um, and then they might use snake case or something like that on the back end or maybe snake case in the database and no case on the server. Uh, whatever you like to do, you know, again, it's a preferential thing, but for whatever reason, a lot of people stick to these paradigms. Um, but again, that's up to you guys as developers and it's up to the architect of the solution as well. And so again, this is kind of a preferential thing in terms of how you're setting this up. But the crux of the problem is that you should be having some sort of repository uh, where you're doing a translation layer from your service to the model, right? So, or to the view with your model. So you want your views to be independent. Again, this allows for more rapid development and allows you to develop your views without needing the exact models because you can easily mock up your data and then you create the translation layer. It also allows, these repos are great places to cache data as well. So both the front end and the back end, you can cache data for, data for a certain amount of time. You can use the input arguments as essentially a, a key generator to create a cache key. And based off of how quickly you might be using these requests, right? Sometimes um, if you're doing the same request multiple times within you know, a second or two, it's good to just cache that data and provide the data to the user, uh, you know, the same data to the user, right? So repos are a great place for this. So again, repos, in my opinion, best place to use it as a translation layer and as a cache. All right, so I hope that made sense and I hope that helped to some degree. I hope you guys are able to actually use this in your own applications. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. But essentially the gist of it is just making sure that you have that translation layer where you know, you're changing your models going to the database and you're changing your models coming from the database, right? So your server has its own isolated unique models and the same goes for the front end when you're ingesting your models from your API. So your front end should be, you know, translating those models when it receives them and it should be translating those models when it sends them off. So it's a to and from relationship.
there should be a transform to and a transform from, all right? So if you guys have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments. If you have any future content ideas, let us know. We'd love to make a video for you guys, and we hope to see you soon. So get out of here.